Welcome back on Agenda. We are talking about the government's proposal to increase maternity from the six months that they get at present. This, of course, people in the government usually to eight months. It's got us all talking about what's the ideal and how it works in the real world. And it's interesting, uh, one of our audience members had a question for the panelists. Go ahead with your question. With due respect to ma'am, I would like to raise, I would like to raise a question as of after four or five years, I would be a father. I would be a father of a child. I want my, I want my mother to, I want her mother to spend some time with him. No to just a uh, kind of a breastfeeding and all that. She needs at least nine months after that. And I want to ask a uh, question that what would be the designation after the what maternity leave? What happens to career? Yeah. Dr. Basad, she has to take... start from the scratch. You, you would be worried about, you'd, yeah. yeah, okay. See, the whole thing relates to attitudes to to child care. Na? So when you, one of the assumptions that you're making is that the best thing for the child is for the mother to be there. But I would put to you that uh, men may play an equally uh, fulfilling and good parenting role uh, with respect to bringing up children. It's, it's something in our minds that suggests that you know women are automatically better at that. And Do you men think are that's not. the problem? Uh, that's partially the problem. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the world would change if men did much more in terms of childcare. Uh, there are some things that only women can do, for example, exclusive breastfeeding or breastfeeding is something that only a woman can do, a man can't do it. But a man can do practically everything else. Men can change nappies, men can look after sick children, men can give doses of medicine, men can put babies to sleep, men can rock and sing to babies. And men do it, and they do it with great joy. I mean, it, it's almost, it's a, uh, uh, you know, it's a handicap to men that they grow up thinking that they can't, uh, it's a pleasure and you a joy. Know, I know, Paul, when you so wanted to also come in over here. So she should be able to get back to her work um, and uh, without any discrimination after her maternity leave. It's, but it's also the same mindset that sometimes prevents it. That mm. It's all right to say it's there in law, but you know, finally it will be the, the boss uh, who implements the law or to gives, who gives a promotion, who gives a good remark. Which varies her, a lot. Which you wanted to come? Yeah. yeah I, I, I absolutely agree. I think whatever legal framework you have or not have, I think attitudes need to change first and foremost. Nothing Tara, else. Is there legislation, is there like litigation going on about people who come back and find that, you know, it's not the same, that they've just been left behind in the rat race? I have no doubt that there are a whole host of cases. They certainly are all over the world where they come back and they find that certain things have been taken away or their promotions don't come as quickly or more strikingly where, at the time of Indian being employed. do we Indian women fight for that that much? Uh, it's difficult to say. I'm not aware of any statistics that say that. Um, I can tell you that there are cases. Um, but I think, for instance, introducing a paternity leave uh, would equalize the playing field in many ways. So you wouldn't get asked the question, are you planning to get pregnant? Because would you ask a man if they're planning to have children? But that question gets so asked so a lot, I, right? I, I did, that question was asked to me, unfortunately, again, from a media organization. <laughs> and, and so it, oh, yeah. I, I had a child in my t early 20s. And, and actually, when they were hiring me, they asked me, are you planning to get pregnant again? And yeah, nobody would dare yeah. ask it now. That question is illegal. People illegal did. Yeah, OK. Now, Saloni, I wanted, um, you wanted to tell us about an experience that you had while you were hiring for your startup. Sure. So. Um, uh, you want me to the, the Tamil Nadu one, yes. So yeah, when we were hiring for a startup, uh, I worked in the rural areas, and one of our center managers, she came back and she shared that you know I'm going to ask uh, if you know you're going to have a baby, if you're going to if you've just got married, you're going to have a baby, and we had almost a half a day debate on it, and I had to like coach her that we cannot ask this question, right? Mm -hmm. But I think from her perspective, she was a mother of two, but from her perspective, she was only saying that look. I have to run operations and I don't want to be, you know, have any constraints when I run my operation. I just want to run it. And this is a woman? This is a woman with two children. Who's hiring in rural India. Absolutely. Is that unfair that she, no. for yeah, an employer? See, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, mostly people now have two, many have only one child. Yeah. So you're only looking at it happening once or twice yeah. in the career of a woman. I don't think that's a game changer in terms of the maybe 40 years of a working life when you're looking at. You're yeah. looking at breaks of six months, yeah. maybe twice in that period of 40 years. So for any employer who has any sense, yeah. 
it should not be a game changer because otherwise there is so much of value. Is there going to be a trickle down effect, Dr. Prasad? We're totally out of time and I want to no, ask. But see, it, don't yeah. forget, there is no employer for these 97% women in the informal sector. Yeah, if she's true. doing agricultural work, she's doing domestic work, there's no employer. The ones that Bimraji was telling Government about, must yeah. step in. Government must step in. The taxpayers' money has to be used for this. You create because a type of... You said there's non-utilization of all the cess that they collect. And that can be utilized for... That's in the construction industry, yeah. but in others as well. So the government must create a mechanism for such okay. women. Also so that the employer doesn't have to... I mean, it's not the... should not be left to the employer. Yeah. Okay. So, so perhaps that's giving us the road ahead where the government should look at. It's okay to introduce, propose eight months, but they need to do a lot more as well. Thanks to all our panelists. Uh, that's it on Agenda. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.